Here's another question from our interview with Brandon Spencer Hartle of the City of Portland. Presented by your Eastmoreland neighbors, bringing you the facts you need and deserve. Okay. The That's other big change, and maybe we could talk about it in a few minutes, is the regulatory landscape continues to shift. And so while the nomination is in progress, so too are changes in what listing in the National Register would mean. Hey, tell me more about that. Okay, I, now is as good as time as any, because that is intriguing. What What is in flux right now uh, in terms of those regulations? Yeah, great great question. So when the, the East Moreland nomination was, was first conceived of, um, again, back five, six years ago, the city of Portland took had had an approach codified in the zoning code that listings in the National Register of Historic Places automatically conveyed city historic district status. And so I'm going to look at, um, I'm going to compare East Moreland to Irvington. Irvington is a, a district in Northeast Portland. It was listed in the National Register of Historic Places in 2010 as a district. And when that district was listed, it automatically became a city historic district, automatically became subject to both demolition protections for those contributing buildings, garages and houses, and throughout the district, design regulations that we call historic resource review. Historic resource review is essentially design review for historic landmarks and districts. And so when the East Moreland National Register nomination process began, that was the regulatory environment in which the city of Portland applied historic district status and National Register listings. But as the East Moreland process um, was unfolding, so too were changes in state administrative rules governing how cities can and must protect historic resources. And so in tandem with the local effort in East Moreland to create a National Register district, there was a parallel, not related, but a parallel effort happening in Salem to change what National Register listing could and must mean in local communities. And that process, which wrapped up in January of 2017, cast down to cities, including city of Portland, the mandate that National Register listing in the state of Oregon no longer could automatically convey local historic district status, and that National Register listing could only and must only result in demolition review. Okay. Those state admin rules, while well, they gave us a new approach, um, did leave a, a number of local policy decisions up to communities across the state. And so in the East Moreland process, it started out designation of the National Register, design and demolition regulations, the landscape changed at the state so that National Register listing in any community in Oregon would only bring with it demolition protections, couldn't automatically bring with it historic district status. And we're at a place where, again, um, with the Historic Resource Code Project that we'll talk about, the city is going to fill in those remaining questions and gaps about what National Register listing can and must mean. And that gives the opportunity to decide for a district like East Moreland or any National Register district in the future, do we apply demolition protections to garages? How do we specifically uh, categorize demolition review? Like what activities would trigger a demolition review? And I think importantly, um, what's the process if additional design or other protections were to be applied to a National Register district? Who makes that kind of decision? What's that process look like? What role do owners play? What role does the broad community play? And so again, these are the landscape is shifting as this nomination is glacially moving its way through a federal process. So, so we don't know right now. Visit our website for the full hour-long video with Brandon about how a historic district will impact East Moreland. That's at eastmorelandhistoricdistrict.com.